News 4. Watching out for you. Uncovering scams and ripoffs. Questioning wasteful spending. Getting the answers you need. Now, Chris Nagus and News 4 investigates. It's a scam so convincing that it's costing people here in St. Louis their homes. People struggling to pay their mortgages thought they found a solution, but they had no idea the man offering help was a convicted felon who spent years in prison. If it's going to cost our home to make this stop for somebody else, so be it. A Jefferson County couple roped into an outrageous scheme. It started when they asked their lender, Great Southern Bank, for a loan modification, an attempt to lower their monthly payments. It's not like we were trying to screw anybody over or, or anything. We, we were just trying to lower our house payment. The couple says the bank wasn't agreeable, so they shopped around and stumbled into this. Are you a homeowner in need of some serious help with your mortgage? The Federal Mortgage Marketplace, a supposed nonprofit federal program designed to help struggling homeowners with impressive claims. Number one in consumer reports as seen on the Ellen Show and 12 million homeowners helped since 1987. Our couple didn't know it, but it was all a lie. At Federal Mortgage Marketplace, we have a solution. They had access to information that normal people wouldn't have access to. Making it seem even more legit. Making it seem even more legit. A supposed loan officer told them they were approved and even left these convincing voicemails. You're all set to go. Looks like with Great Southern Bank, they've been notified with a cease and desist document, certified mail, signature confirmation. Just call the touch base to give you a status update, let you know everything's going fine with your mortgage program. The caller lowered their monthly payments from $1,800 to $1,400 a month. The couple was told to mail their checks to Washington, D.C., which seemed logical because they thought it was a federal program. The checks were made out to FDC, but we discovered the D.C. mailing address was a UPS store, and we determined the website was actually created in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. But we didn't know that until the couple made mortgage payments month after month to the fraud. And since none of the money was actually going to their bank, Great Southern foreclosed on the house in late May. In your wildest imagination, could you ever imagine no. a scenario like this? No, not at all. And and no, <laughs> I just it, it still just kind of blows me away when I start thinking about it because everything was so real. So real because the phony federal marketplace even sent paperwork and payment receipts. So I called the Federal Trade Commission. As it turns out, they were also investigating. Documents sent to me reveal the man behind it is Jonathan Herbert, a felon convicted of cocaine possession, grand theft auto, and weapons violations. According to the feds, every aspect of the operation was a lie, and that Herbert has stolen at least 600,000 from hundreds of consumers, and many victims have lost their homes. A very real possibility for our couple. The money at this point is, is kind of irrelevant. It's gone. Um, we've come to terms with that. It, it's now, it's, they've got to be stopped. I presented this evidence to Great Southern Bank. They agreed to postpone a hearing on the foreclosure until they review the evidence. Of course, we'll stay on top of it, and I'll let you know how the bank reacts to this new information. Chris Nagus, News 4. Now, News 4's Chris Nagus. Check out this party boy who likes cocaine, but to score his drugs, he needed to steal mortgage payments from struggling St. Louis homeowners, including veterans. And what's more outrageous, this con man is walking around free. So I hopped on a plane to South Florida to score some answers. The man who lives on the other side of this door is a Rolex wearing lives by the beach bad guy. Hey, Jonathan, are you home? He might not have the best pool on the block, but his $2,500 a month rental just north of Miami is surrounded by posh living, the type of living Jonathan Herbert's victims can only imagine. He told us that uh, they were a government agency. Paul Harris received a call from a person claiming to represent U.S. Bank, his lender. But he wasn't talking to the bank, he was talking to Herbert, who was running one of the most convincing fake companies I've ever encountered, the Federal Mortgage Marketplace. I mean, everything just looked so legitimate. Paul was promised lower monthly mortgage payments, so was his brother Ron a disabled veteran. It's got a gold seal on it. That's the way it came to me. Both brothers thought they found mortgage relief and month after month made their modified mortgage payments to what they thought was a federal program. The letters even had FDIC logos. 
It was all fake. My guts always told me the right thing. And this time it failed me. Easy to see why I obtained some of the recordings left by the fake company. He uses high pressure tactics to swindle homeowners. You need to call the number, ma'am. This is a serious, serious situation. This is your home. Turns out the home office was nothing more than a Florida P.O. box. Mail was picked up and brought to this dump near Fort Lauderdale. The office is now closed with a simple note in the door saying the company is under the control of a court appointed receiver. There's something to Jonathan Herbert. Walter Matthews is now overseeing the fake company and look at this box of letters. All of them from unsuspecting homeowners okay. sending their mortgage payments. Herbert made a killing. How much cash did he pocket through this scheme? Well, we have uh, preliminary numbers of between six hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars. What did he do with the money? My guess is day-to-day -day living expenses, and we've had a discussion with his father, and he said that he had a drug problem. So perhaps he used uh, a substantial amount of the money on drugs. That's just great. Well, this convicted felon was blowing mortgage payments up his nose. Something really bad was happening to our victims. I don't need this. I don't need this happening. The foreclosure notice arrived during our interview. The Harris brothers are in jeopardy of losing their homes because their payments went to a con instead of their bank. Ron, whose grandkids live with him, doesn't know how he's going to make up the loss. If you're here, we'd like to talk to you about your loan modification business. I couldn't wait to meet this guy face to face, but he wouldn't open his door and he wouldn't answer his phone. And apparently, he's too scared to call back. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Does he realize what he's done here? Uh, he's taken no responsibility whatsoever. To me, a person like this should get life in prison. He really should. Because he, he he, what he's done, he's destroyed lives. The Federal Trade Commission froze Herbert's bank accounts, but there are no assets to recover. It's all gone which means our homeowners will not get paid back. So why isn't this guy in jail? We don't have the authority to uh, prosecute our defendants criminally, but we do, in many instances, work with uh, criminal authorities to facilitate prosec criminal prosecution. The FTC can't prosecute, but the Department of Justice can, and that's what our victims want. You can bet we'll be following up with that agency to find out what's going to be done to hold Herbert accountable. Chris Nagus, News 4. Now, News 4's Chris Nagus. Desperate St. Louis homeowners thought they were getting mortgage relief, but instead they were dealing with a fake company and a felon who was cashing their mortgage checks. Finding the bad guy behind it wasn't easy. He put a great deal of effort into not only getting money out of people, but in hiding his connections to the operation. Jim Davis is an attorney for the Federal Trade Commission. He's talking about Jonathan Herbert, who lives in this $2,500 a month rental home north of Miami. Herbert convinced St. Louis homeowners to modify their real mortgage payments through a phony company called the Federal Mortgage Marketplace. And now some of those homeowners are in foreclosure because instead of sending their payments to their bank, they sent them to Herbert. Herbert's accused of stealing at least $815,000, but he's not in jail. So we asked the Federal Trade Commission attorney, why not? We don't have the authority to uh, prosecute our defendants criminally, but we do, in many instances, work with uh, criminal authorities to facilitate prosec criminal prosecution of our defendants when appropriate. and. Uh, People do go to jail for the, the conduct that Mr. Herbert engaged in. Herbert's victims certainly want to see him in jail. He's already a convicted felon. Now it will be up to the Department of Justice on whether to prosecute Herbert for costing people their homes. Stay tuned on this one. Chris Nagus, News 4. Now, News 4's Chris Nagus. A Florida party boy running a bogus mortgage business was rolling in other people's dough, but now he's trading in his swimming pool for a court appearance here in East St. Louis. And judging by his reaction this morning, the party's over. Hey, Jonathan, could we talk to you about uh, your bogus business? Mr. High Life rolled up in a blue cab with a frown. Can we talk to you about all these people that are losing their home because of what you did? Anything you'd like to say to them before you go into court today? Not a word from Jonathan Herbert. Maybe he's just not used to the chilly weather. Or 
Earlier this year, I tried to find him at his Florida home in a posh neighborhood just north of Miami. Hey, Jonathan, are you home? I've been looking for Herbert for a while. He's the guy that started a phony mortgage business and convinced homeowners across the country to refi their loans, including these veterans, brothers from Jefferson County. I mean, everything just looked so legitimate. Turns out the company was fake. So was the refi. But Paul Harris didn't know that. And just like his brother, sent reduced mortgage payments to Herbert month after month, thinking he was a legitimate lender. Now both brothers are facing foreclosure. According to the feds, Herbert ripped off at least 120 homeowners and stole more than 750 grand. To me, a person like this should get life in prison. He really should. Because he, he he, what he's done, he's destroyed lives. Herbert's bogus company was taken over by a court-appointed receiver. Besides owning a fancy Rolex and spending $2,500 a month renting his home near the beach, I asked the receiver what Herbert did with the rest of the cash. We've had a discussion with his father, and he said that he had a drug problem. So perhaps he used uh, a substantial amount of the money on drugs. Today in court, Herbert admitted he did drugs as recently as two days ago and that he's been stressed out thinking about the case. But ultimately decided to skip a trial and just plead guilty to the crime. Okay. U.S. Attorney Steve Wigington says Herbert targeted homeowners that were barely scraping by, deliberately entangling victims in a financial disaster. It's like going along and, and seeing a motorist in need of aid on the side of the road. Instead of helping them, you pull over and steal from them. Herbert's scheme might be over, but the damage is done. And since unhappy Johnny is going away for a while, I wanted to, to give him one last shot. Come on, John, this is your last chance. Anything you'd like to say to these people? There are people losing their homes because of you. Anything you want to say to those people, Jonathan? How'd you come up with this idea? The full responsibility, we're going to court. If there's any comments, we'll make it after court. Jonathan, can you, can you tell us what you did with the money? Sir, can you tell us what you did with the money? All I can tell you is Jonathan is extremely sorry. He's taking full responsibility. And here's the deal with that. Herbert's victims really don't care if he's sorry. They want their money and their lives back. But so far, the feds haven't recovered much in the way of assets, which means there's no money to pay back the victims. He's now in custody awaiting sentencing in March. Of course, I'll let you know what happens. In East St. Louis, Chris Negus, News 4.